Hello. I am. I was about to make a chicken on the rotisserie um, for supper tonight, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna just show you how I do it on the live. So, don't mind me. I had a dental appointment, so my mouth is numb, <laughs> and so I look like you know that funny lopsidedness. But anyways, um, so I have a small. It's about um, less than two pound small. Cornish hen, uh, hen here, game hen, and it is thawed out. It's been in the fridge thawing for about five days, so it's good and thawed out now. I'm just gonna dump it into my pan. And then I have Two of them, but I'm just gonna put one on the thing and see how it how it does it. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments here as I'm working. Zane, don't do that. Don't do that. You're gonna wreck my kitchen name. Okay. So I've got the one end already tightened on there so that it doesn't slide around. Another Z-bar? Wait just a minute. We've got six kiddos, so life is busy. Hi, Sue. I'm a kiddo. Yeah, you're a kiddo. I'm a kiddo. You're a kiddo. <laughs> He's not a kiddo, he said. Okay. So, I'm actually going to dump some of this juice out of the pan so we don't have so much sloppiness right into my sink. Then some people maybe you wash your, you rinse them out, but I guess I don't because I'm cooking it anyway. Up to you whether you want to rinse the chicken off or not. I have to wash my hands. Say so say hi. <laughs> That's my oldest daughter. <laughs> She's got the baby. And I'm just going to put a drizzle of uh, avocado oil. And I've got onion salt and garlic pepper seasoning that I'm going to just sprinkle on there. I'm going to do both sides here. And then I just kind of roll it around in the pan, let it get all over the chicken. A little more garlic pepper. Just season it good. And then I'm going to, okay, it's empty in there. I didn't know if the cavity was full or not. And then I just stick this um, spit right through the end here. And then use your, kind of make sure it's poked into both legs there so you got a good grip on it and then i'm going to tighten it with the other yeah did you hear it? kelly <laughs> kelly has no idea i'm live on a video <laughs> and so i've got it good both poked in on the ends here and i'm going to center it onto the spit so i'm going to just re-tighten the yeah Okay, so if it's seeming to flop around too much, you can tie it up. Um, I do have some string here and I'm gonna just tie it up anyway. So what I'm using is just cotton yarn. If you have butcher's tie or whatever, you can use that. Oh, my tooth, my tooth is doing better. They were able to finish the root canal and then I had a filling on the bottom. So I just kind of had a, another long appointment today. So yeah, that's why you see my mouth is not the same today but you know what that's life so you got to do things anyway okay so I'm gonna tie where did I put the scissors now in the sink 
tie it up so that it doesn't flop around while it's cooking and then it doesn't wear the motor out on the caloric because if you notice your as it's spinning it might click and that means your motor is kind of it's it's like too heavy so it flops over and then it kind of gets out of gear so you don't want that to happen otherwise you can ruin the motor on it then you won't have a rotisserie and then that wouldn't be good so um we'll see if this is long enough but i'm just gonna go across here and see if i'm not very good at tying i just kind of wing it no pun intended wing it <laughs> chicken wing <laughs> okay and once you have it tied I'll show you in a minute here where to put it in the caloric. There's probably better YouTube videos about how to tie your chicken. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just tie it up to make sure it doesn't flop around. You're having salmon soup for supper. And then obviously this cotton string, you wouldn't want it to catch fire, so you want to make sure you cut off the, the excess string once you knot it real good. And I have done a six pound um, chicken on the rotisserie and that was a bit much. So I would not recommend doing anything like over say three or four pounds. Um, otherwise, it just gets too big on the rotisserie and it's causing that motor to spin too much. And your bird will be flopping around, touching the top and the bottom, and it's just a big old fire hazard. So, Zane, don't do that to my core, okay? I mean, the kitchen, aid, sorry. Oh my gosh, my mind. Okay. So, I'm going to turn the camera around here. I wash my hands. Turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. I've got the, this is a rotisserie handle, and I just use that to pick up the chicken, and then I gotta make sure I have it in the right, okay, I gotta do it the other way. Because there's a certain way that it goes in, so this, if you see this little end, that's what goes on the, um, that side where you can, can you see that? Slip it in there, you get that into gear. Doesn't want to go right exactly there. So then I'll just use this to kind of, okay. So as you can see that, coming in, and then that end sits there. So you should have it tied good. If you're seeing it flop around, put the, tighten those um, spokes in there good. And then I gotta put my drip tray in too. I can kinda keep forgetting about that and I keep getting all this junk on the bottom of the tray, but. Yeah, what are you saying? It goes on the metal tab, yeah. So. because you're gonna get a lot of juices that are gonna come out of the chicken as it's cooking. So make sure you have that drip tray in there for sure. And then also um, I've had to empty the drip tray at least halfway through so that I don't have juices dripping out of my counter. And then I'm gonna take my phone and can I turn this camera around? So I'm gonna hit the start stop. Callie, do you have the baby? Can you get the baby? What's it doing here? Air fry. We're gonna go chicken. Can you please, are you holding him? Can you hold him for just a few more minutes? Please? Give him his pacifier? Okay, so I actually bumped this temp down. So I'm gonna hit the chicken and then you'll see it lights up that that blue button that it's gonna rot rotisserie. Otherwise, if you don't use the chicken preset, you're gonna have to push that button um, so that it will rotate. But I'm gonna bump the temp down a little bit. Go to 400 for about 40 minutes, and I'm gonna check it at about 30, so. Then you just push the start stop, and then you'll see it's turning around in there. 
right away. So, yeah, no, I gotta take those off, I know. I just keep them up there while I am storing, so in between uses. Um, and then I should probably pull it out because I push it back towards the back when I need more counter space. So that is it. Um, yeah, we don't want it to hit anything. Just make sure that it's not falling apart as it's rotating and you don't hear a click click. As of right now, it seems like it's in good shape, but if you start to notice that the, the motor clicks or that it kind of flops too much and then your you know, chicken wings or whatever are um, starting to fall off, then definitely stop it, truss it back up real good and just adjust so that it doesn't wear out your motor because the rotisserie function is actually pretty cool in this air fryer and you don't want that to go out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn it back around. Does anybody have any questions or comments for me? The pan in? What do you mean, am I putting the pan in? I put the pan in. That one? <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, that's basically the gist of it. Yeah, I put the drip pan. The bottom drip pan is underneath those elements on the bottom. <laughs> okay, well, you guys have a good evening. I will post a picture when I'm done cooking it, and um, then you guys can all see how good it looks when it's done. So have a good night. <laughs>